Welcome back to Some Room to Grow. It is now the middle of May. The garden is starting to look like a garden again, so it's about time we took a bit of a tour around here to see exactly what's happening. So the first thing I should talk about is our hugelkultur beds, because this is where we grow the majority of our kitchen veggies. This is now our second year growing in these three beds. And since we had great success with them last year, I am giddy with excitement to see how well they perform this time around. Now today I'm just going to give a brief overview of what's growing in here right now because we did just plant some seeds that haven't sprouted yet. So I am going to make a much more detailed Google culture video of what's growing in here once everything is actually visible. So the lettuce is looking absolutely amazing right now. We have red and green varieties. All of our brassica plants have survived and are doing quite well, despite my fears that I had killed some of them with transplant shock. We've even had a few volunteer crops pop up in a few places and we're happy to just let those grow. We also have cover crops growing in here that I planted in late winter and I'm just chopping and dropping those before they flower. And we finally just transplanted all of our tomatoes, basil, and peppers and planted seeds for beans, melons, and zucchini. We also have all of our garlic growing in the hugel culture beds this year. This is the first time trying to grow that in the hugel mounds. So we put all of our soft neck garlic in patches toward the front of the beds, and then the hard neck garlic is right here behind the trellises. I'm really excited for that hard neck because we got that from Edible Acres and the bulbs were enormous. So I can't wait to see how those turn out. Of course, we planted these all in the fall and we tried to make sure that they would be arranged in a certain spot and stay out of the way of where we would be planting other things like tomatoes and everything that would go on the trellises. Of course, since those cloves were sitting in the ground for a little while, we had birds and squirrels digging around and they wound up rearranging those cloves a bit for us. Some of them wound up a bit more in the way of where those plants were gonna go. One of them actually wound up on the other side of the fence where they're doing the construction, but whatever. As long as it's growing somewhere, then we're gonna have lots of garlic and we're gonna be happy. So before I show you how sad our pepper plants are looking right now, I should give you a little bit of a backstory. Because for the first time ever, we had a massive infestation of fungus gnats in our grow room in the basement. If you've had to deal with fungus gnats, then you probably know all about them already, but if not, they are an incredible nuisance. They reproduce in the soil around your plants and they feed on decaying roots and fungal networks in the soil, hence the name. So we had our tomatoes and peppers growing right next to each other and we had fungus gnats spreading in the soil of both. But after a while, I noticed that they were also leaving their eggs all over the pepper plants themselves. They weren't doing the same on the tomatoes. The peppers, the leaves, and the stems were all covered in fungus gnat larvae. It was disgusting. So those poor pepper plants wound up losing a lot of leaves, growth, slowed down and basically stopped altogether. But just in the nick of time, we were ready to bring all those plants out here to start hardening them off out on the deck. And that's when the ants found the fungus gnat larva. And it, they absolutely went bonkers. Every time I would come out to check on the plants, I would see more and more ants crawling all over the plants, eating all of the fungus gnat eggs, and they almost completely clean them off by the time the plants are ready to transplant out here into the garden. And once we got them out here, of course, even more things found those fungus gnat larvae. So we had more species of ants and little spiders having an absolute feast on them. So I think that saved those pepper plants just in time. They are coming back very slowly. Some of them are in very rough shape, but I think they're gonna make it. So 
I really hope we don't have to deal with fungus gnats again. I know there are some good products out there for treating the soil to get rid of them. For house plants, a lot of people like mosquito bits. Those are supposed to work really well, but I haven't yet done the research to find out how safe those might be for using around plants that you're growing for consumption. I think it's better to assume that they are not safe for that, but for anybody out there who knows more about that or can recommend anything, please leave a comment below to help us all out. It would be great to find something to deal with those because they can be a real nightmare. In our case, nature was eventually able to come to the rescue for us, but we may not always be so lucky. So last year, I also made a video about building these miniature hugel culture beds out of some woody yard waste and compost that we had. And I wanted these to be sort of a multi-purpose garden bed because we have the food forest that we're working on over this way. So we can add in some more edible perennials here but we can also use them as an overflow for any of the annual vegetables that we're not able to fit into the main hugel beds. Now, most of what you can see here is cover crops, but we do also have some veggies mixed in. We purposely went a bit overboard starting seeds this year so that we would be forced to find some more spaces out here to grow more in abundance. So I decided to plant all of our red onions in this bed here. We also have more broccoli and kale and hot peppers, lemon basil, and some tomatoes. So all six of the tomato plants that we have growing in these mini hugel beds are determinate varieties, which as you may know already, are supposed to only grow to about four feet and produce all their fruit at the same time. Now, we never grow determinate varieties, so we have absolutely no experience with them. We always grow the indeterminate ones, which will just keep on growing all summer long until the frost kills them in the fall. And that's why we like to use these eight foot trellises so the plants can just keep on growing. Last year, we had a few plants that just kept on growing off the top of the trellises to a height of about 12 feet total. So determinate, varieties are great for container gardening because they have a much more compact growth pattern. So we still had a few of these basic tomato cages laying around and we wanted to grow as many tomatoes as we could. We couldn't fit them all on the big trellises so we decided what the heck why not grow some determinate varieties and plant them out here in the mini hugel beds. I'm sure you noticed these grow bags sitting here and I am so glad we finally got some of these because for a long time I have wanted to grow potatoes in these and that's exactly what we're doing. They are just starting to sprout. These were just store-bought potatoes that started sprouting in the basement. You know, it happens. And so I just chopped them up, stuck them in some potting soil and now they are producing even more potatoes for us. So I had to wait a bit to plant these. I would have liked to get them in earlier, but it was still so cold and wet for a while. And then it suddenly turned to a record-breaking heat wave. Uh, in fact, it was so bad that I was trying to make this video last week and my poor camera overheated and froze up on me. But I guess that's okay because now all the plants are twice as big as they were last week, so whatever. Anyway, with these plants, as they continue to grow, we will keep adding more soil around them to bury that stem to allow the plant to produce more tubers off of that stem where it's underneath the soil. And then when the plants are all done, we can just tip the bag over, dump them out, and collect our delicious harvest. Now, I'm sure some of you have been curious for an update on the veggies that we grew in our cold frames over the winter. And uh, I think it's pretty obvious that everything made it. So I made a three-part series all about growing in cold frames. That can give a lot more information. Not everything is still here at this point. We really just have, there are two kinds of lettuce. We also had radishes and bok choy and mach. You can see the mach is still in here, but it's gone to seed because that is much more of a 
cold hardy, cold weather crop. And we did get to try some of it. It's delicious, uh, very mild, but good for adding to salads. The radishes were basically just an experiment to see how a root crop would grow over the winter. And they didn't grow very big. Of course, the soil also hasn't matured enough or maybe it was a little too compacted still with all that clay in it, but they were very tiny. It's not really a big deal. My wife and I are not big fans of radishes, so we were happy to just try that out as a test. We also had bok choy growing and that also went to seed already. I'm sure some of these things bolted quite easily on the few chilly but sunny days where I forgot to vent the frames and even though it was cold outside, it still got pretty warm in there, I'm sure. So those bolted, but the lettuce is still going and it's been great to have some early salad greens before everything else starts producing in the main garden. And I am so happy that I have finally tried using cold frames. This is a great way to get more out of our growing season each year. I can't wait to try doing these again. Now I'll just have to figure out what else we can try next year. And maybe if we want to move these frames to another part of the yard. Now here's something which is really neat. I tried not to show this in my last video, but you may have seen it in the background anyway. I planted some strawberries in this here tree stump. Now, I didn't do anything to protect them at first, and so they look pretty bad. I just planted them in here, and they got shredded by the local wildlife, so uh, I had to staple some chicken wire over the top to keep them safe. Now they're starting to come back a little bit. Now these plants came all the way from Arizona. My brother and his wife were nice enough to send us a whole batch of plants from their own strawberry patch that they have growing in an old bathtub. So they share them with everybody and they sent us a whole bunch. I did my best to keep those plants alive under grow lights all winter, but only about a third of them actually survived and made it into the stump. Then of course we lost a few more to the squirrels, but they're doing all right now. And someday I hope to make a more complete video about planting and growing strawberries in a tree stump. And finally, we come to the food forest. And we're gonna go handheld for this because it's just a little bit easier. So this is still a work in progress food forest. We don't have much in the way of food really growing here yet. Now, there's not much to report on this at the moment. I have made some videos about what we're growing here before and not much has changed there. It's mostly some assortment of herbs and a lot of comfrey and some walking onions, native wildflowers. We do have our two dwarf peach trees that I just pruned in late winter to start building them toward an open center structure. So I'm trying to get four branches going off in different directions. And I mean, there are branches coming out everywhere right now. So that is going to take a little bit of work there. But I also want to go over to our old garden here. So this is where we started growing when my wife and I first moved in six years ago. And this was a good sunny spot. And when I started the channel, I built these raised beds and these frames have been great, but you can see we're not trying to grow anything here really, except for some weeds and grass. And that's because the soil in these beds turned out to be quite unhealthy for growing. And that's my fault. I made some videos about that before. What happened was I mixed in too much municipal compost, that is compost that was produced at our local landfill facility, and it is totally safe for growing veggies, but I used way too much of it. It is exceedingly rich in nutrients, and we wound up with extremely high phosphorus and other nutrient levels. So our plants were just not doing well here. And that's why we moved everything over to the Hugel culture garden. 
But we still have other perennials here. We have regular and garlic chives. We have some thyme growing there. We have more comfrey, more walking onions back here. And we have a little bit of a raspberry patch. Uh, so these have been spreading around here for the last few years. So my thought is maybe, perhaps, possibly, I haven't really decided yet, that I might take this garden apart. And I don't mean the plants, I just mean taking out all of the fence and sadly this nice garden gate here and even taking apart all of these wooden frames to maybe repurpose into uh, compost bins to keep the compost in order back here a little bit better. And that way we could incorporate more of this area into this whole food forest and plant more fruits and berries and perennial veggies and nuts. You know, we could get some hazelnuts, some apples, pears, cherries, you name it. It would be great to turn this area into something productive again. Maybe it uh, looks nice structurally right now, but it is not really a great area for, for growing. So I am still thinking about this. I still need to decide. It would be pretty sad really to have to take this gate apart. This uh, has been a wonderful gate to have. I made a video about how I put it together. It's turned out to be a very popular video. I still stand by this gate. It is held up for the last five years, still works very well. But if it means we could return this whole area into something that is actually producing more food for us again and making it easier to navigate, move between this area and that area without any kind of boundary there, that would be excellent. So I need to think about all that a bit more uh, if that winds up happening, of course, you will see it here. So that's it for now. Thank you for joining me for this spring garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I will definitely do more like this throughout the summer as things continue to go nuts. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.